Lone Bird, Shadow on the Moon by James Reardon and Brenda Ralph Lewis Many snows ago, before the white man came to take the Indian lands, people of the Chippewa tribe were great and strong, and they were as many as leaves upon the maple tree, their tents as countless as the stars in the sky. They hunted buffalo on the prairies of the west, trapped beaver in the rivers, caught deer in the forest around the great lakes, and fished in the streams that flow from the mountains towards the rising sun. They were feared and respected by their enemies, and loved by all their friends. The good spirit, chief of life, was pleased with his children, and his children were content. In those long ago years, on the shores of the big water, now Lake Superior, lived an Indian maid called Lone Bird. She was the only child of her mother, She-Eagle, and her father, Dawn of Day. Lone Bird was as graceful as a silver birch, her voice like the river's song at twilight. No daughter of the tribe had such proud, fine looks. From all the camps of the Chippewa Nation, young braves came to seek Lone Bird to be their wife. But she stared coolly at them all, unmoved, as they sang of their skill at hunting and daring in war. In vain they bought gifts to the lodge of She-Eagle and Dawn of Day, but the heart of the maid was, they thought, like winter ice, and each brave return home dismayed. Dawn of Day, anxious at his daughter's coolness, praised the skill and courage of the braves he knew. He told her that no maid in the tribe had so noble a band of suitors from whom to choose. But when her father had spoken, Lone Bird took his hand and, smiling, said, Do I not have my mother's love and my father to protect me? What need have I to wed? Dawn of Day made no reply for he did not understand. Next day, he left his lodge, summoned the unmarried braves of the camp, and told them of his plan. All who wish to marry my daughter should gather on the shore of the lake. A race will be run. He who is fastest shall take my daughter as his prize, and lead her to his lodge. So the young men eagerly prepared for the race, each hoping for the deer's swiftness of foot. News of the contest spread throughout the camps of the Chippewa tribe, and braves came from far and near. On the morning of the race, a great crowd gathered. The elders were there as judges, mothers were there to comfort their sons, and to look for any other suitable brides. Fathers came seeking worthy husbands for their daughters. The daughters, in turn, hoped to be noticed by the braves, who were painted in the finest colours, and plumed with eagle and turkey cock feathers. Only one member of the tribe was missing, Lone Bird. She sat, sobbing in her parents' lodge. When everything was ready for the contest, the bronze-muscled braves lined up, their hearts beating like war drums. On a signal, they all dashed forward in a jostling crowd. Soon, two runners had broken free from the others. They were Bending Bow and Hunter of Deer. Both had loved Lone Bird for many moons. Each was fleet-footed, as swift as the rushing wind. And when both runners reached the finishing line, the judges could not tell who had won. So Bending Bow and Hunter of Deer raced again, and once more they came in, side by side. A third time they ran, and no winner could be declared. Let them jump against each other, someone said. Yet, when they did, neither could beat the other by even a hair. The good spirit was acting here. As dawn of day returned to his lodge with troubled mind, he found his daughter there, her head bowed and eyes red from weeping. Dawn of Day dearly loved his only child. Lifting her head, he 
He spoke gently to her. You must not weep, my daughter. Everyone must marry. But why do you wish to cast me from you? She replied. Is your lodge not large enough for me too? Dawn of day decided at once. You are right, lone bird. You shall never leave your parents' lodge against your will. Quickly, he returned to the elders still gathered beside the lake. The contest is over, he announced. Bending bow and hunter of deer have done well, and it is clearly the good spirit's will that my daughter shall remain unmarried. And so the braves sadly returned to their camps. Summer passed, leaves fell, the cold winds of winter blew across the lake. Then, in spring, the snows began to melt. The sun was warm, the air full of the smell of fir and pine. Yet, Lone Bird felt sad. She thought of her parents, of their white hair and faltering steps. She knew that their journey to the spirits was not far off. What will become of me when they are gone, she thought. I have no children of my own or company to brighten my passing days. And for the first time in her life, she felt the fear of loneliness. As she gazed down the slope at the first flowers, she saw that they grew in pairs, two on each stem. Then she watched the birds flying and busily building nests. They, too, lived in pairs. No flowers or birds or even wild geese live alone, she murmured. It is not meant to be, but I am still glad I did not marry, she sighed. For a long time, she sat above the lake, wrapped in her lonely thoughts. When she rose to leave, it was already dusk, and the full moon cast a silver path across the lake. Lone Bird gazed longingly at the bright moon. Stretching up her arms, she cried, Oh, how beautiful you are! If only I had you to love, I would not feel lonely. The good spirit was listening, and his heart was moved, and on unseen hands, Lone Bird was lifted up to the moon. When dawn of day had finished his work upon the slopes, he looked for his daughter. When he did not find her in the lodge, he returned to Maple Hill. From there he called her name, time, and time again, but no answer came. His anxious gaze searched the trees, the slopes, the surface of the lake. Then, in desperation, he went to call the good spirit and looked up to the sky towards the shining moon. Could it be? Yes. He clearly saw his daughter smiling down, held in the moon's pale arms. Lone Bird seemed to say she was at peace. No longer did Dawn of Day or She Eagle worry about their daughter. They knew that Lone Bird would be cared for by the loving moon. Many, many snows have passed since the days of Lone Bird and her Chippewa tribe. Their people have become weak and few. Their tents are scattered to the winds. White strangers occupy their hunting grounds, and the graves of their dead go unmourned. But flowers still bloom in spring, birds still build their nests, and the stars still shine. And if you look up to the moon, you can still see the face of lone bird smiling down. She gives hope to her people as they tell her story by the fading light of their lodge fires.